It was a somber day for Mr. David Miller's family as friends and neighbors convened to bid farewell to the revered man on his ultimate voyage, everyone was stunned when a wolf approached the coffin during the ceremony and bit Mr. Miller on the neck, an act which later unveiled even more astonishing truths. Mr. David Miller, who had aged gracefully, resided on the outskirts of Idaho, the city where he was raised and from which he seldom ventured, apart from his time in military service. After dedicating several years to the armed forces, he retired and chose a solitary lifestyle. In his later years, Mr. Miller enjoyed the tranquility of his porch, where he admired the evening sunsets, he cherished his privacy and, although he was amiable towards his neighbors, he always kept a respectful distance, his friendship was limited to a young boy named Will, who lived nearby. Mr. Miller fondly referred to him as baby and often indulged him with sweets while sharing tales of his days as a medic on the battlefield, where he aided injured soldiers. Following his military career, Mr. Miller found himself missing the adrenaline of the battlefield, yet he settled into a serene routine. His mornings began with a leisurely walk to savor the fresh air, followed by a morning tea, and then hours spent reading on his porch. While he occasionally engaged in conversations with neighbors, he often preferred to sit back and watch time gently pass by. Known for his reserved nature, he was seldom disturbed by others. The narrative unfolds as rumors about wolves roaming the nearby forest began circulating in the city. Although Mr. Miller was aware of these tales, he chose to steer clear of the woods, not out of fear, but to avoid potential conflicts with wolves or poachers. Acknowledging his limited ability to escape danger, content in his peaceful existence, Mr. Miller believed fervently in the protection of all life, including wild animals. When some neighbors opted to hunt wolves for safety, he expressed his objection, though his concerns were regrettably overlooked and the hunting persisted. One evening, while sitting on his porch, Mr. Miller heard a disturbance in his barn, initially uncertain. He grabbed a flashlight to investigate and was met with an unexpected sight, a large wolf, sitting calmly amidst the boxes, overcome with initial fear, Mr. Miller soon realized the wolf posed no threat, observing a gunshot wound bleeding on the wolf's leg, he understood the creature's frailty, realizing the wolf was too weak to pose any danger, Mr. Miller was contemplating aid when a knock at the door startled them both, the wolf growled, prompting Mr. Miller to gently request silence. He then left the barn to answer the door, his mind racing with thoughts of how to help the wounded animal. After closing the door behind him, Mr. Miller encountered three young men waiting on his porch. They inquired whether he had seen the wolf that usually ran past. Considering he often sat outside with a book, Mr. Miller informed them that he had been occupied indoors and hadn't noticed anything unusual. Upon cautiously opening the door earlier, Mr. Miller discovered the wolf right where he had left it, approaching the animal. He noticed its labored breathing and pained whimpers, it seemed to recognize Mr. Miller's intent to assist. The retired doctor carefully examined the wolf's leg, extracted a bullet, and securely bandaged the injury. In the following days, Mr. Miller nurtured the wolf back to health in his barn, treating its wounds and feeding it. Throughout this period, a profound bond formed between them. Mr. Miller would spend evenings by the wolf's side, gently stroking its fur to ensure its comfort all while making sure the neighbors remained unaware of his new companion, for someone as reclusive as he was, this secrecy was not challenging. One evening, the wolf felt strong enough to stand on its own, Mr. Miller escorted it back to the woods and set it free. The wolf hesitated momentarily before disappearing into the forest, weakly. They would reunite in the barn where Mr. Miller continued to feed it. Although these visits gradually became less frequent, they never ceased entirely, David understood that life was gradually returning to normalcy and accepted this as natural, typically self-sufficient. Mr. Miller did his own shopping, however, one particularly busy morning a few months after meeting the wolf, feeling exhausted, he enlisted the help of his young friend, Will. After writing a list, he handed it to Will, who happily agreed to assist and headed to the grocery store. Upon his return, Will found Mr. Miller collapsed on the floor and immediately called for an ambulance, sadly. By the time help arrived, Mr. Miller had stopped breathing and was declared dead at the local hospital. The community was deeply affected by the loss of Mr. Miller, who, despite his solitary lifestyle, had been a steadfast pillar for his neighbors. On the day of his funeral, as friends and neighbors congregated to bid him farewell, a wolf burst in and approached the coffin. It stood silently beside Mr. Miller for a moment without making contact, then bit him and retreated into the woods. 
the attendees were baffled by the incident, however, Mr. Miller suddenly rose from the coffin, to the astonishment of all present. A doctor in the crowd explained that the wolf's bite had miraculously reopened Mr. Miller's airway and alleviated his distress. Contrary to what everyone believed, Mr. Miller had not died, he had been given a second chance at life, thanks to the wolf. That morning, he indulged in a French toast made with wheat bran, which triggered a severe allergic reaction. This reaction constricted his airways, plunging him into a near-death state. Tragically, Young Will was oblivious to his friend's allergic sensitivities. The previous time the boy had been to the grocery store, he had picked up this loaf for the elderly gentleman. Unaware of the dangerous allergy, upon regaining consciousness, David's friends explained the situation to him. He repeatedly inquired about the wolf. Several weeks later, Mr. Miller left the hospital and eagerly anticipated reuniting with his friend. His hopes were indeed realized. On a serene evening, he spotted a wolf peering out at him from the undergrowth. He dashed towards the wolf embracing his loyal companion and expressing gratitude for the life-saving intervention. The animal affectionately licked Mr. Miller's face before disappearing into the woods. Mr. Miller never encountered the wolf again, but the memory of it remained with him forever. After watching this story, how do you feel? Feel free to share with us in the comments section below. And then there is another similar warm story. Let's continue to see. There are moments when the actions of animals truly astonish us. In one such instance, a wolf discovered an infant at the scene of a car crash and carried her into the forest, leading to an extraordinary series of events. The atmosphere was eerily quiet as the usual sounds of the forest and birds were interrupted by the horrific crash of a car down an embankment. The driver, a woman, had blown a tire, causing her to lose control and veer off the road. The car began to tumble when it hit the gravel, rolling down a short incline, during the chaos. The woman was ejected from the vehicle amidst the cacophony of metal twisting and glass breaking. As the baby cried out, the car finally came to a halt. And an unsettling silence ensued, even the infant seemed to be in shock. The mother, although in pain and unconscious, was filled with concern for her child but was unable to rouse herself. Smoke filled the scene as the baby's car seat, still partially attached to the car and the child securely fastened, lay on its side. Suddenly, something unexpected occurred. A wolf emerged from the woods, sniffed the air, and approached the mother, sensing her critical state and the scent of blood. It then moved towards the car seat amidst intensifying smoke. The wolf pulled at the seat, causing the baby to cry again. As the wolf inspected the child, the mother momentarily regained consciousness and caught sight of the formidable wolf near her baby. She noticed its bared teeth and wanted to scream, but consciousness eluded her again. Unseen by her, the wolf carefully worked at the straps securing the baby, once freed. The wolf gently picked up the child by her clothing and disappeared into the woods. At the same time, the woman's mobile app had automatically notified the police and emergency services of the accident. Help arrived just in time as they witnessed the car beginning to catch fire in the wooded area. A search and rescue specialist named Nolan Stevens was among the first on the scene. He immediately took action rushing towards the vehicle in an attempt to find any survivors, however. The flames were too intense, preventing him from getting close. As a seasoned veteran, Nolan was determined not to give up easily, he had been about to force the door open, but fortunately, that action turned out to be unnecessary. At the very moment he considered it, he noticed a woman lying on the hillside where she had been ejected from her vehicle, she was barely alive, and he knew better than to move her. As the horrific nature of the accident suggested that any improper handling might result in a spinal injury, potentially causing lifelong paralysis, aware of the risks, he decided not to intervene unless she ceased breathing. When the paramedics arrived, he exhaled a breath he hadn't realized he was holding. Acutely aware of the woman's severe head and bodily injuries, the emergency medical technicians, EMTs, quickly yet cautiously transported her to the ambulance, en route to the hospital. The woman began to regain consciousness. Although she could hardly speak, she immediately began to call out for someone named Anna. Despite a paramedic's efforts to soothe her, she persisted in asking about this mysterious individual. Initially, it seemed she was merely rambling, but then her words took a chilling turn as she repeatedly uttered my baby and inquired anxiously if her baby was all right. It was only then that anyone realized there might have been another passenger involved in the crash. They couldn't turn back as the woman's condition necessitated urgent medical attention at the hospital. However, they radioed the information to the rest of the first responders. Nolan, 
who was nearest and most experienced, cursed himself for not having searched the area more thoroughly once the police had arrived. He immediately headed back to the crash site. Although the fire in the car had been extinguished, the scene looked grim. His heart sank at the thought that a baby might not have survived if still inside the vehicle during the fire. He clung to a faint hope that the child had somehow escaped. Upon examining the scene, Nolan's attention was caught by a trail of drag marks leading away from the car. With determination, he followed the trail and eventually found a car seat concealed among some bushes. Immense relief washed over him. Thinking that if the car seat had been too close to the fiery vehicle, the baby would have been at serious risk from smoke and fumes. Miraculously, the seat had been dragged a safe distance away. As he prepared to lift the baby to safety, he turned the car seat over, only to find, to his shock, that it was empty. Moreover, the safety belt had been crudely cut, with jagged edges visible. It was a perplexing and distressing scene. The baby had disappeared, as Nolan continued his investigation. He pondered over the mysterious circumstances surrounding the baby's vanishing. Nolan came across a chilling sight. Massive paw prints he identified as belonging to a very large wolf. If the wolf had indeed taken the baby, was it already too late to save her? Determined to find out, he followed the tracks to see if there was still a chance. At the very least, he wanted to provide the family with some closure. However, he chose to remain hopeful, convincing himself that the baby was still safe. The alternative was simply too harrowing to contemplate. Immediately, Nolan briefed his team about his mission to rescue the baby and set off without any delay. He carried a backpack filled with essential hiking gear to ensure he was fully prepared for the expedition. Just minutes after finding the car seat, he knew that time was critical, and his team would join him as soon as possible. Nolan tirelessly followed the wolf's tracks until daylight started to fade. An impending obstacle was the approaching darkness. As night descended, he was compelled to stop his search. Although he had a flashlight, missing any vital clues could mean the difference between finding the baby and losing her forever. The thought of returning to his cozy, warm bed while a baby lay vulnerable in the dark was unbearable. Determined not to waste time by going home and then returning, he decided to wait right there until dawn, after notifying his team of his plans. He set up a temporary camp. If the baby was nearby, Nolan was resolved to discover her location as soon as possible. Sleep eluded him, and with every distant wolf call, he feared for little Anna's safety. It was cold, and all he could do was worry about the baby, who, apart from presumably being with a wolf, had also just survived a horrific car accident and might have sustained serious injuries that needed immediate attention. The situation was dire. The only slight relief in this grim scenario was that Anna's mother had reached the hospital and was found to have an unharmed spine and neck, which was miraculous given how she had been ejected from the vehicle. However, it was discovered that she had sustained severe head injuries. The doctors faced the tough decision of placing her in an induced coma to aid her recovery. They were deeply concerned about her critical condition, in some small way. Nolan felt relieved that they didn't have to inform a mother that her baby was lost in the woods or that wolf tracks were their only clue to finding her. For now, the mother was unaware of the desperate search unfolding in the woods, unaware of the peril her infant was facing. Anna remained blissfully ignorant. Unlike the rest of her family, her father was desperate to go and search for her himself, but was reassured by others that experienced professionals were already handling the situation. The best course of action for him was to support his wife by staying at her side and being her pillar of strength. It was a challenge for Nolan, who had participated in numerous rescue operations both during his military service and in civilian search and rescue efforts. However, this was the most distressing situation he had ever encountered. Typically, he searched for adults or, at the very least, teenagers who had some capability to sustain themselves until help arrived. But now, they were searching for a defenseless baby not even a year old, who was completely reliant on them for rescue, and they needed to act quickly. Nolan was determined to do everything within his power to ensure a successful rescue as soon as there was enough daylight to see. Despite the cold day, Nolan tried not to think about what the low temperatures might mean for the baby. The wolf tracks led him past several dens that had been previously occupied by wolf families in the area. There were many tracks crisscrossing each other, and Nolan had to proceed with caution. Although he was highly experienced, he was just one man and knew that in the event of a wolf pack attack, his chances of survival were slim. Moreover, if the wolves sensed any threat to their pups, they would likely respond with aggression. However, Nolan wasn't focused on his own safety, his priority was finding the child. 
with trembling hands and a racing heart. He cautiously shone his flashlight into the den, anxious about encountering wolves and what he might discover, he was desperate to find the baby but also fearful of the condition he might find her in and the lasting impact the ordeal could have on their lives, it was a possibility he couldn't ignore, but he had to suppress his emotions and keep pushing forward, the first den he checked was deserted, with spider webs across the entrance indicating that wolves hadn't used it for some time. He moved from den to den in the area, which not only consumed his time but added another layer of complexity to an already dreadful day. The overlapping paw prints were difficult to interpret, further complicating his search. The wolf he had been following had left clear tracks that he could not afford to lose. Losing them meant losing all remaining hope. Nolan retraced his steps to the last known location of the tracks and proceeded cautiously. Maintaining a vigilant eye on the signs of the wolf he pursued, eventually, he emerged at the far end of the trail, still alert to the distinctive prints he needed to follow. As he continued, the landscape grew increasingly familiar, although he had approached from the opposite side of the forest, he recognized this region as one he had previously explored. Nolan had once ventured into these woods to rescue a group of teenagers on an excursion. Despite the woods' seemingly straightforward pathways, the unobservant could easily lose their way, for this very reason, park officials had established several cabins throughout the area, stocked with essential supplies. These refuges offered replenishment for those low on provisions or a cozy retreat from the cold for campers, however, these precautions were of no use to Nolan now, wolves, after all, aren't aware of such human havens, or are they, although seldom occupied. These cabins did not attract Nolan's quarry, instead, the wolf's trail led him into the mountains, and Nolan was astonished to realize where the creature was headed, the tracks directed him to a secluded cabin in the woods, typically used by park rangers and the occasional biologist, it was peculiar for a wolf to head straight towards human habitation, especially since the cabin had been vacant for months, if the wolf had hoped to find companionship there, it would be sorely disappointed. Knowing his destination allowed Nolan to hasten his pace, the wolf had discovered an infant following a car crash and had taken her into the forest, now, Nolan feared the worst, upon arriving at the clearing where the cabin stood, he braced himself for a grim discovery on the porch. Contrary to his fears, he found the wolf basking in the sunlight, with the tiny infant nestled against its side. The baby was not crying, which concerned Nolan deeply. He knew he needed to secure medical care for her as soon as possible, but first, he had to carefully extricate her from the protective embrace of the wolf, who seemed to have adopted her as one of its own. As Nolan watched, something unexpected occurred when the wolf caught sight of him, standing erect. Nolan prepared for a possible attack, clutching his flare gun as a defensive measure, however, it turned out to be unnecessary, the wolf glanced at the infant. Then gracefully descended the porch steps and departed, the animal's actions implied that its sole intent was to ensure the child was reunited with her species, seemingly seeking assistance for her, reflecting on the events, it was astonishing to realize that the wolf had never posed a danger, in fact, it had rescued the infant, initially, it had removed the child from the fiery wreck, probably under the assumption that the mother might not survive, and thus tried to deliver the child to other humans for care, after a brief pause at the forest's edge, where it looked back at the child, the wolf then turned away, Nolan hastened to the child, despite the chilly day, she remained warm, protected by the wolf's embrace from the cold, the empathy displayed by the wolf was remarkable, yet, Nolan knew she wasn't entirely out of danger, while there were no bite marks or signs of rough treatment, the child did have bruises from the car crash. Concerned about potential internal injuries, Nolan knew they needed to reach a hospital immediately, just as he lifted her, a frightening situation unfolded, the child ceased breathing, there was no time to waste exiting the woods on foot with her condition, immediate action was required, Nolan began administering mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, fortunately, her heart was still weakly beating, so chest compressions weren't needed. A fact that relieved Nolan given his large stature and fear of causing further harm, after several breaths, she began breathing on her own, not taking any risks. Nolan called for emergency assistance and carried the child towards a nearby clearing, after walking a short distance, he glanced back and noticed the wolf trailing them, oddly, instead of feeling threatened, Nolan found the wolf's presence reassuring. It felt as though he wasn't completely alone in this critical duty of safeguarding the young life. Throughout his service, Nolan had encountered numerous perilous situations and had saved many lives. 
but caring for this fragile girl was unlike anything he had ever experienced. When the helicopter finally arrived with paramedics on board, he was immensely relieved to hand over the precious burden to trained professionals. When the mother arrived at the hospital, her worried family was eagerly waiting for her. The baby had sustained some minor injuries which were easily treatable. However, without the intervention of a man and a wolf, the outcome could have been different. Several days later, when the mother emerged from her medically induced coma, the first person she saw was her husband, who was cradling their daughter Anna. The baby was contently gnawing at her hands, appearing as perfect as any child could be. Both the child was out of danger and the mother was on her way to a full recovery. They later expressed a desire to personally thank Nolan for his heroic actions. Meeting the grateful family and seeing the cheerful baby brought Nolan to tears. Months after the incident, the family decided to further express their gratitude by visiting the old cabin with Nolan where the wolf and the baby had been found. They were curious about the location of the dramatic rescue while exploring. Nolan spotted a movement. The wolf was there again at the forest's edge. It gazed at the baby and observed the family for a short while before disappearing back into the woods. The wolf had the chance to see that the baby it had saved was now thriving. For this, the family would hold both Nolan and the wolf in their hearts forever. After watching this story, how do you feel? Feel free to share with us in the comments section below. And then there is another similar warm story. Let's continue to see. During his stroll, as time unfolded, he was astonished to discover that the creature he had taken in was not a puppy. When Andre Musienko woke on a chilly winter morning, his initial thought was to engage in some physical activity to warm up, preferring not to exert himself too much. He finally decided on a leisurely long walk. Luckily, he resided in one of the more secluded areas of Siberia, with a forest just beyond his backyard, donning his boots and his thickest coat. The man ventured outside. Andre followed a well-trodden path, frequently used by others before him and likely by many after. He often visited these woods, and his route was typically the same. However, today, he craved a change and thus turned left down an unfamiliar path. The trees in this new area appeared broader and stood impressively tall. Andre could only glimpse bits of sunlight filtering through the foliage. Suddenly, Andre detected a strange noise, although it was faint. He could discern it as a distress call. He pursued the sound, which thankfully wasn't far off. It didn't take long for him to locate the source. A baby animal curled up against a tree. It was a puppy, with its eyes shut, appearing to be no more than a few weeks old. Andre was baffled as to why someone would leave such a vulnerable creature alone in the middle of a forest. The sight deeply saddened him. Moving closer, he extended his arms, picked up the puppy, and held it tight. Hoping his gloved hands could transfer some warmth to the freezing animal, at that moment, he had no time to think of anything else but to ensure the pup's safety and rushed back home, rescuing the abandoned puppy. Andre felt this was one of the most significant acts he had ever undertaken. Upon reaching his home, he quickly grabbed some blankets and wrapped the ice-cold puppy. He hurried to turn on the heating and fetch some water, within a few minutes under Andre's care. The puppy ceased shivering and seemed to be in a much better condition. He contacted the local veterinarian for a checkup, eager to ensure the puppy was both healthy and content. Although Andre had only known the puppy for a few hours, he sensed a deep bond forming between them. Once more, his plans hadn't really crossed his mind. After adopting a stray puppy he named Aquila, Andre noticed over the following months that his new companion was rapidly growing and had a voracious appetite from the day they first met. As time passed, Aquila's hunger intensified which Andre understood was normal since young animals, especially dogs and other mammals, need a consistent intake of nutrients to maintain their energy and body mass. However, as Aquila continued to grow in size, his facial features becoming more defined and his body broader. Andre began to ponder the true breed of his pet, something that remained an enigma. His curiosity peaked since he had never encountered a dog that resembled Aquila. Andre decided to consult his circle of dog-owning friends but they were as baffled as he was. Frustrated, Andre shared images and videos of Aquila at various stages of growth, hoping for some insight, yet his efforts yielded no results. What seemed like a simple task of identifying a dog's breed turned into a complicated challenge. As a last resort, Andre contacted an animal specialist and arranged a face-to-face -face meeting to determine Aquila's breed. They drove to the specialist's office, and upon arrival, the expert was shocked. As Andre entered with Aquila leashed by his side, the expert couldn't conceal her astonishment. All along, Andre believed he was raising a puppy, 
only to discover that Aquila was not a dog at all, but a wolf, specifically a Eurasian gray wolf, recognized as the largest canine species. The similarities between wolf cubs and dog puppies had led to Andre's honest mistake, but as Aquila matured, it became increasingly clear he was a gray wolf. The animal specialist pointed out that the significant size difference was a crucial indicator of Aquila's true species. Now aware of Aquila's identity, Andre had to consider the implications for his pet's well being. The notion of a domesticated wolf captivated many, and soon, word of Aquila reached the local zoo. The zookeepers expressed interest, initiating contact with Andre about possibly relocating Aquila to a more suitable environment. Andrew was incessantly bombarded with calls and emails persuading him to send Akella, his wolf, to the zoo. Having heard unsettling tales about these places, Andrew was hesitant to even visit a zoo, let alone entrust his beloved companion to one. The other option didn't appeal to him either. Many urged him to return Akella to the wild. Concerned for both his safety and that of the local community, however, Andrew doubted this course of action. Knowing there was no assurance of Akella's safety in the wilderness, he recalled the day he first encountered the lone wolf cub, left to survive on its own. Despite arguments claiming it was the morally right decision, Andrew had reasons to believe otherwise, the most sensible solution became clear. Akella had spent considerable time with Andrew, adjusting to a new way of life. It seemed only logical to let the wolf remain with him. Andrew had claimed responsibility for Akella, and relinquishing him now felt wrong. Initially, Andrew's family was skeptical about his decision to raise a wolf, citing the numerous risks associated with wild animals, especially wolves known for their predatory nature and formidable strength. Yet, throughout their time together, Akella had never displayed any aggression towards humans. Andrew felt there was nothing to fear. Akella was akin to a domesticated dog. After more than a year and a half, Andrew and Akella had become inseparable, choosing to follow his heart rather than heed others' opinions. Andrew eventually won the full support of his friends and family. He was thankful for stumbling upon Akella in the forest, and Akella was equally grateful for being discovered to this day. They reside together in Andrew's Siberian home, as content as can be. In fact, their bond inspired Andrew to aid other wild animals in distress. He established several wildlife sanctuaries across Russia, providing a safe haven for gray wolves and other canines like foxes and coyotes. These sanctuaries have gained popularity, saving numerous animals, to garner more public support for these canines. Andrew turned to social media, sharing his experiences on his successful Instagram account. And at Black Canadian Wolf, which boasts over 100,000 followers, his online community regularly enjoys a plethora of photos. The tale of Andrea Nicuela and her canine companions has resonated with audiences globally, and I trust it.